Solubility is the ability to dissolve. Here we'll discover how much of one substance can dissolve in another one. In a solution, the solute is the substance present in the smaller amount, and the solvent is the substance present in the larger amount. The mixture of solute and solvent is called the solution. We need to give you a couple more definitions now. The concentration of a solution is the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given volume of solution. And the solubility of a solute is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a given volume of solution. Many different units can be used for these, but common ones are grams per liter or grams per hundred milliliters. This attractive blue crystal is made up of a compound called copper 2 sulfate. Here is some copper 2 sulfate that has been ground into small crystals. If we look up copper 2 sulfate on the internet and search for its solubility, we find its solubility is 32 grams per 100 milliliters of water. This means 32 grams is the maximum amount of copper 2 sulfate that will dissolve in 100 milliliters of solution. A heaping teaspoon of copper 2 sulfate has a mass close to 16 grams. So two teaspoons of copper 2 sulfate have a total mass of 32 grams. We'll start with one teaspoon of copper 2 sulfate, which has a mass of 16 grams. We also have a beaker and a stirring rod. Now we'll add 100 milliliters of water to the beaker. Of course, water is colorless, but here we'll color it a very light blue, just so you can see it. So we have 16 grams of copper 2 sulfate in the spoon and 100 milliliters of water in the beaker. Remember the solubility of copper 2 sulfate is 32 grams per 100 milliliters of water. Predict what will happen when we add 1 teaspoon or 16 grams of copper 2 sulfate to the 100 milliliters of water in the beaker. We'll add the copper 2 sulfate to the water and stir. we see that 16 grams of copper 2 sulfate has dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So the concentration of copper 2 sulfate in the solution is 16 grams per 100 milliliters. We'll make a note in this table on the left that the concentration of this solution is 16 grams per 100 milliliters. Remember the solubility of copper 2 sulfate is 32 grams per 100 milliliters. If the concentration of a solution the amount that is dissolved is less than the solubility, the maximum amount that can dissolve, the solution is said to be unsaturated. In an unsaturated solution, there is still room for more solute. So we'll note down here that this solution where one teaspoon has dissolved is unsaturated. Now I'll predict what will happen if we add another teaspoon of copper 2 sulfate to our solution. Now we'll add a second teaspoon of copper 2 sulfate to the water. Notice that all 16 grams dissolve. No undissolved solid has fallen to the bottom. So we were able to dissolve 2 teaspoons or 32 grams of copper 2 sulfate and 100 milliliters of water. So we'll note here that the concentration of copper 2 sulfate is 32 grams per 100 milliliters. And the solubility is also 32 grams per 100 milliliters. So the concentration is equal to the solubility. Therefore, we've added exactly the amount of solute that can dissolve. Now predict what will happen if we add another teaspoon or another 16 grams of copper 2 sulfate to the solution. Now we'll add the third spoon and stir. Notice what happens. The copper 2 sulfate does not dissolve. The crystals just fall to the bottom of the beaker and remain in solid form. The 32 grams that were added with the first two spoons is all that can dissolve, so the concentration is still 32 grams per 100 milliliters. The maximum amount that can dissolve is the solubility, which for copper 2 sulfate is 32 grams per 100 milliliters. If the concentration is equal to the solubility and there is undissolved solute on the bottom, the solution is said to be saturated. So we'll identify this solution as saturated. So far we've added three teaspoons of copper 2 sulfate to the solution. The first two teaspoons with a mass of 16 grams each have dissolved. 
So 32 grams of copper 2 sulfate are now dissolved in 100 milliliters. This is the same as the solubility of copper 2 sulfate. When the third spoon is added, it falls to the bottom of the beaker rather than dissolving. Even though we added more, only 32 grams of copper 2 sulfate were able to dissolve in 100 milliliters of solution. Different substances have different solubilities in water. If we look up a substance called calcium carbonate, we see that it's a mineral that makes up a type of rock called limestone. It's the main component of pearls and many shells including snail shells and eggshells. It's even used as a calcium supplement or as an antacid to control excess stomach acid. Scrolling down on its webpage, we see that its solubility in water is 0 0.013 grams per liter at 25 degrees. Because 100 milliliters is one tenth of a liter, its solubility is equal to 0 0.0013 grams per 100 milliliters. Notice that this is much, much lower than the solubility of copper 2 sulfate, which is 16 grams per 100 milliliters. So what do you think will happen if we put a teaspoon or 16 grams of solid calcium carbonate in 100 milliliters of water and stir it? Will it all dissolve? Remember the solubility of calcium carbonate is 0 0.0013 grams per 100 milliliters. So make a prediction and let's try it. Here's a teaspoon or 16 grams of calcium carbonate in a beaker. We'll add 100 milliliters of water to the beaker. Watch what happens when we add calcium carbonate and stir we see that it sinks to the bottom without dissolving. The 0 0.0013 grams that does dissolve is so small that we don't even notice it. We've added 16 grams of calcium carbonate to 100 milliliters of water, but it's only 0 0.0013 grams of calcium carbonate that dissolve in this volume, and the rest of it falls to the bottom. Because all of this solute that can dissolve has dissolved, this is called a saturated solution. So what do you think will happen if we add another teaspoon of calcium carbonate to this saturated solution? We see that the second teaspoon also sinks to the bottom without dissolving. Once a solution is saturated, we cannot dissolve any more solute in it. 